We are the temple of Yahshua, the kingdom without walls. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. According to St. John 2.19, our faith is in the Holy Spirit, his new covenant, according to Hebrews 8 and 10. And our mission is to baptize in the saving baptism of his word, according to Ephesians 5, 25 and 26, where he sanctify his church by the washing of water by his word. Brothers and sisters, we come again with these weekly words of exhortations. And if you continue to follow us and believe, you are saved where you are in his kingdom without walls. Our words of exhortation today will be family healing. We're going to talk about the design of the family. Then finally, the consequences when we don't follow God's design as we encourage and exhort us to come together as a family, both our natural families and our spiritual families. Let us now go to his throne of grace for prayer and ask God to prepare us for his precious word. Father God, in Yahshua's name, we come to your throne. Father God, let your Holy Ghost, Lord, lead us and guide us. Give us the words to speak, Father God, and you get all the glory and the praise and the honor. Father God, it's an honor to be in front of your precious jewels. Father God, make us a sanctuary. Let your Holy Spirit speak through us. And for the listener, Father God, open their eyes so they can see and perceive. Open their ears so they can hear and understand. And give them a heart of flesh so they can believe that you are our God, the creator of heaven and earth, who died for us and brought us back to yourself. We come to your throne with thanksgiving, thanking you. We have so much to thank you for. Thank you for your abundant life. Father God, we know that you are spirit, Lord, and we worship you in spirit and truth. Let not your word return unto you void, but let it accomplish the mission that you have sent it. These blessings we ask in Yahshua the Messiah's name. Amen. Tis love that makes us happy. Tis love that smooths the way. It tells us mind. It makes us kind to others every day. God is love. We raise little children. God is love. We would be like him. Tis love that makes us happy. Tis love that smooths the way. It helps us mind. It makes us kind to others every day. This world is full of sorrow, of sickness, death, and sin. With loving heart, we'll do our part and try some soul to win. God is love. We raise little children. God is love. We would be like him. Tis love that makes us happy. Tis love that smooths the way. He tells us mind. It makes us kind to others every day. Brothers and sisters, family healing. We're going to talk about the design of the family. Then we're going to talk about the consequences and the examples when this design was not followed. And I'm going to start off here because these are words of encouragement. We're encouraging the family and our families to come together. And I'm going to speak as Paul spoke in Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. He said, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil spirit be put away from, from you 
with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. This is what we tell in the family today. Let's not be bitter one against one another. And, and especially your family members, let's not speak evil against each other. And the most powerful thing is let us free ourselves by forgiving one another. So as we talk about the family design, we're going to talk about the parents, children, wives, and husbands in God's design for the family. He gives the parents a job to do. All parents have a job to do. According to Proverbs 22 and 6, it states, Train up a child in the way ye should go. When you are old, he will not depart from it. God give us our children, but they only on loan to us. We are only to train them up. Maybe about a quarter of their life is in their training. And children, while you are being trained, you need you have you ought to obey your parents. It's not your thoughts, it's what God has given your parents. As he tells the children in Ephesians 6, 2 and 3, he said, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee and I may live long on the earth. You have long life when you obey your parents. When you are not bitter with your parents. And when you focus more on the good that your parents does versus maybe some injustice that has happened to you. And think of how they have dedicated their life to you. Your mother, how she brought you in this world, how she was sick for nearly a year, bringing you in this world. How your parents took care of you and ensure you got education as they trained you up. Do not speak evil against them as the scripture says don't think you as a child is a know-it-all christ is jesus we know he he was a know-it-all he knew everything he was god himself he was in the temple teaching the priests there and the elders when he was 12 years old, talking about a know-it-all. But he gave us an example. He tells us in Luke 2 and 51, he says, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth. That's when he was looking for him in the temple. And Nazareth was home, he came back home. He came home. And this is the part, even though he knew it all, he was subject unto them. Children, your, your parents have a job to do and you have a job to be subject unto them until their long period is up when you reach maturity around ages 18 to 21. We all belongs to God. And once you reach that age, then if you don't like your mother's training or your father's training, it's for you to go and make your own way and make your own living and become mature. 
He says in 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, it says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became the man, I put away childish things. And, and you elderly teens or your late teens, when you start getting into your late teens, start putting away childish things. It's time for you to now take on responsibility because soon you would have your own children put away bitterness wrath and anger and clamor as we speak about healing of the family then it gives wives things to do wives you should support your husband as the priest of the house Listen to your husband, submit to your husband. How it states in Ephesians 5, 22 to 23, it says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church showing you that both families, natural families and spiritual families, we ought to follow God's design. He put the man in charge. Even before we go and listen to other men, wives, listen to your husband. Even if he's not in the word, as Peter told us in 1 Peter 3 and 1, we should still submit to him. As it says, if any, speaking about the husband, obey not the word, they also may be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. A wife who knows the word can first of all, she sanctify her children and they are clean. And then by her actions, she can persuade her husband into the way. But God give the men a special assignment in his new covenant. As he told the prophet Joel in Joel 2.28, he said, it should come to pass afterwards that I will pour my spirit on all flesh, that's men and women. And then he, he says, your son and your daughters shall prophesy. But he give men a special thing. He said, your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. God gives the man dreams and visions to lead the family. And Peter, he repeated the prophet in Acts 2, 17. And as the man, as we start talking about the husbands, you should have church in your house. Keep, the, keep, saint, keep Satan out of your house by bringing your family together and having prayer with your family. As Joshua said in Joshua 24 and 15, he said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God give the man the duty to serve him, to lead the service of him. But we all are one in Christ Jesus. Husband ought to love and honor their wives. And we know there's turbulence with any of us living with one another. But brothers and sisters, let not your, the sun go down on your wrath. Forgive and be in harmony one with another. And fathers, furthermore, don't drive your children to wrath with 
your words and the things you do. Don't give them more than 40 stripes. As they tell us here in Ephesians 6 and 4, and it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. This is the mothers too. And when we are talking about these families, even if we have one parent as a as a as the lead or or a one parent household, the second parent is there in the spirit. Mothers have to be the fathers in the spirit. The fathers have to be the mothers in the spirit. It says uh, here in uh, continuing in Ephesians six and four. It says, but bring them up in the nurture and the ammunition of the Lord. Try to bless your children's fathers. Bless them. As we see of old, how all the fathers of old, Abraham, and we see Isaac and Jacob, how they all blessed their children. They, get, they, they left blessings on them. Be careful what we speak to them. Don't speak the negative to them. Because our words becomes what happened. The way a man think, so is he. And finally, brothers and sisters, if we don't follow God's design, what would happen? We can see in the first century how God's design was not followed and it destroyed the nations. In Micah 7 and 6, how he prophesied. He says, he says, for the sons dishonors the father and the daughters raise up against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he says, and the man enemies are of his own house. Brothers and sisters, it ought not to be how he tells us not to have bitterness, not the evil speaker of, of our parents. And he tells us to be kind one to another. We use, should use that powerful thing of forgiveness. When we forgive, brothers and sisters, not only are we forgiving the person, but we are relieving ourselves. Forgiveness help us more than the people or the person that we forgive. The family is a microcosm of the world. If we have strong families, we have strong society. The enemy knows that we attack those that are closest to us. But think, when we think about our bitterness against our family, try to think of the goods they done. All parents have sacrificed their life for their children. <clears throat> Many times it may seem that they don't love you, but they love you if they feed you, if they educate, make sure you get education. They love you and they are not perfect. And yes, they may have done some injustice to you, but forgive. And we know it's a microcosm of the world. And in this world, God told us there will be tribulations and there will be tribulations in the family. Well, brothers and sisters, let's heal the family. Let's not attack those that are closest to us. That's why the enemy put weapons in our communities because they know we're not going to lash out at our true enemy, but we're going to lash out at one another. Let it not be. And finally, as Jesus spoke in Matthew 5, 23, 24, if talking about how we should forgive our family members and forgive one another so he can hear our prayers. If we don't forgive, God don't hear us. As he stated, therefore, if thou bring thy gifts to the altar and there remembers that thy brother have ought against thee. What he tells us to do 
He said, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. And today our gifts is our words, our prayers. Brothers and sisters, let us heal the family. Let us not have bitterness one against the other and let us forgive. Now let us have our benediction. Father God, we thank you, Father, for our families, all types of families out there. Father God, even our spiritual families. Father God, we asking for a healing. Heal the families. Father God, Lord, let, uh, let the family be strong so we have a strong society. Father God, now unto him that is able to give us a seedily more than we can ask or think. According to the power that is within us, the almighty Jesus Christ, Yahshua Messiah, may he be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Brothers and sisters, we are the Temple of Yahshua. God bless you. And when this life is over and we are called above, our song shall be eternally of Jesus and his love. God is love. We raise little children. God is love. We would be like him. Tis love that makes us happy. Tis love that smooths the way. It helps us mind. It makes us kind to others every day. Amen.